I'm going to show you some of the tools for mapping fractures in VRGS. I'm working in VRGS version 2.52 build 24 and all of the functionality seen in this tutorial should, uh, should be found in that version and versions above. I've got my outcrop model loaded up so we're looking at some fractured mudstones here with uh, really nice joints in there that are clearly visible. We're going to have a go at interpreting these. I'm going to go into the interpretations tab and for mapping these I'm going to use the dip azimuth tool. Now there's a couple of extra features that I'm going to switch on in here. I'm going to switch on lock interpretations on and snap vertices. The mode that I'm going to use is dip azimuth by end points. This means you can make a measurement by selecting multiple points. It's a double, double click to finish. From the vertices that you've uh, interpreted, VRGS will calculate the orientation. So let's have a go. I'm going to start off by interpreting this fracture, though this joint that's running along in this orientation here. So I'm going to start interpreting and I can move around and go into corners. And what I'm trying to do is as I'm interpreting, I'm putting a vertex wherever there is an intersection between fractures of different orientations. If I hold down the shift key, I can move the model around while I'm still in, t in interpretation mode. So there we go, double click to finish. And we're into the next interpretation mode. I can switch it off just by going back to move mode. So there's our orientation. We can see what the orientation of this particular fracture plane is. I'm going to go to orientation group and switch on, or sorry, switch off the glyphs and switch on show vertices. So this is showing me the construction data or the interpreted vertices that I used to create that object. I'm just going to reduce the size of the displayed line and reduce the size of the displayed vertices. Make them a bit smaller. Now to carry on interpreting, I'm going to go back to dip azimuth by endpoints and this time I'll start interpreting my fractures and where the fractures intersect I'll click on the intersecting vertex double click to finish and now you'll see that vertex has changed to red and that shows there is an intersection between these two fractures. Carry on with my interpretation I think that is probably the same fracture all the way down there That initial interpretation line, when I draw, click the first two points, that seems quite thick. Just finish this line. If I want to change that, I go into the display options and it is set as the interpretation line width, which is in model display. I can reduce that here as well. Take that to 10 centimeters. And then I'm going to carry on and keep on interpreting up my fracture sets. And as you build up your model, Be 
that probably just through to there. And there we go. We're starting to build up quite a nice fracture network and we're maintaining the connectivity between the different fracture sets as highlighted by the changes in the color of the interpretation vertices. We can use our attributes to help us in our interpretation. So here is coplanarity. Coplanarity is how flat the surface is. So this is nice for picking up discontinuities and you see the fracture planes get picked out quite nicely within, uh, within this attribute. I can also switch to dip, which shows us the orientations and that's showing us quite nicely these fracture orientations running through in this orientation here. So we can go through and interpret up one of these fractures. Let's switch back to the image. The snap distance is based on the size of the displayed vertex points. So if you click on one of the displayed vert vertices, it will snap to it. You can change the size of these vertices in your orientations group here. So if you make the vertex size smaller, it will make that snap distance smaller as well. 